Good day, STEM students. This is Felman El Maninang, your General Physics 2 teacher. Ang teacher sa kalam na may alam. Okay, so to continue our discussion for quarter 3 week 1, entitled Gauss Law and Electric Potential, I will be discussing about Gauss Law with regards to word problem. So again, balikan natin ang Gauss's Law, also known as Gauss's Flux Theorem, is a law relating the distribution of electric charge to the resulting electric field. In its integral form, it states that the flux of electric field out of an arbitrary closed surface is proportional to the electric charge enclosed by the surface, irrespective of how the charge is distributed. So ito lang yung simpleng equation niya. Eh. <laughs> Laso, you know, simple. Ayan. So we have this, the electric flux. Ang unit niya is Newton meter square per coulomb is equal to enclosed charge. This is the charge inside our Gaussian shape. Ang unit niya is coulomb but there are instances na naka micro coulomb or milli coulomb. So you have to convert it first to coulomb. So yun muna dapat yun na bago nyo i-perform yung equation. Over epsilon naught. So yun yung basa dyan. No? So that is the permittivity of free space 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. So again, constant dyan, hindi nagbabago. So usually, hinahanap dyan either the electric flux or the charge. So kung hinahanap mo yung electric flux, ito yung equation, if you are looking for the charge, you have to multiply epsilon naught to the electric flux. Now, before we proceed to Gauss law, I will show a video clip showing uh, electric field as it passes through a plane muna. So hindi muna Gaussian, uh, Gaussian shape or yung enclosed sa Gaussian shape. So, dun muna tayo sa plane lang, plane shape. So, ang example na gamitin ko is a plane rectangular shape. Hello, Dan here from howtomechatronics.com. In this video, we will learn about electric flux and Gauss's law. In order to understand Gauss's law, first we need to understand the term electric flux. Electric flux is the rate of flow of electric field through a given surface. It is the amount of electric field penetrating a surface and that surface can be open or closed. First, we will take a look at an example of electric flux through an open surface. These red lines represent a uniform electric field. We will bring in that field a rectangle which is an open area and we will divide the area into very small elements, each with size dA. dA is called a differential of area. Now, we are going to make the area dA a vector, with a magnitude dA. The vector direction is always perpendicular to the small element dA. The electric flux that passes through this small area, d phi, also called a differential of flux, is defined as a dot product of the magnitude of the electric field E and the magnitude of the vector area dA, times the angle between these two vectors theta. The total flux is going to be the integral of d phi or the integral over the entire area of E dot dA. It is a scalar quantity and the end result can be positive or negative. If the flux is going from the inside to the outside, we can call that a positive flux. And if it's going from the outside to the inside, that's a negative flux. The unit of electric flux is Newton meter squared per coulomb. To get a better understanding of what electric flux is, I will bring into this electric field three rectangles. In fact, these rectangles represent one rectangle with different orientations. Now let's explain the flux through each one of those open areas. In the first case, the area is perpendicular to the electric field and the angle between their vectors theta is zero. Cosine of zero is one, so the electric flux is going to be E times dA. Here we have the maximum flux. In the second case, the angle between E and dA, theta, is 60 degrees, and cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5, so the electric flux will be half of E times dA. In the third case, the area is parallel to the electric field, which means that their vectors are perpendicular to each other, and the angle theta between them is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so the electric flux here will be 0. This means that nothing goes through this rectangle, so the flux is 0. Now let's... Okay, so balikan lang muna natin ha. The equation given for us is the differential of flux 
is equal to E, or the magnitude of the electric field, multiplied to the um, differential area. So, napakita ka sa diagram kung yung differential area. Multiplied to cosine theta. Remember, this is, this is a dot product. No? Nalala nyo nung first time, tinuro ko sa inyo. Kapag dot product, meron niyang component ng cosine theta. So, again, this is the differential uh, electric uh, flux. No, mumultiply natin yung tatlo, which is the electric field, the area, the differential area, and the cosine theta, yung angle between the two, the angle between the electric field and the differential area. Pero babalikan ko lang yung, ano, ha, balikan ko lang yung video. Kasi meron tong, ano, eh, uh, last year, nagkakaproblema kami dito. So, ang napapagkama lang kasi nila, yung surface area, tapos ito yung electric field, 90 degrees yan, mali. Ang tinitignan po kasi dyan is the DA the differential area, which is 90 degrees sa, sa, sur sa surface, so yun po, yung block na yun. So, kapag parallel sila, the angle between them is 0. Kaya binanggit kanina, um, cosine 0 is 1. So, yun lang po, yun yung, yun yung point of clarification ko dito. Kasi, napapagkama lang kasi ng iba, yung angle between the surface and the electric field. Mali po. The DA, ito po, yung, yung perpendicular arrow na yan from the surface. Okay? So, move na natin. This means that... Okay. So, let us use this in a problem solving. Okay, sa so example tayo. A circular plane. So, papansin nyo, hindi na ako gumamit ng rectangular. So, mag-iiba yung ano nyan. Yung equation for area nyan. So, balikan natin. A circular plane with a radius of 1 meter is immersed in an electric field with a magnitude of 500 newton per coulomb. The field makes an angle of 30 degrees with the plane. What is the magnitude of the flux through the plane? So, ano mga given? So, again, dA is equal to pi r square. Kasi bilog siya. So, kapag rectangle, gagamitin mo like times width. Kapag square, side times side. So, ganun po. Yung mga area na gagamitin mo, depende sa shape. So, for again, circular, circular plane kasi siya. So, pi r square, that is 3.14 times 1 times 1, equivalent to 3.14 meters square. And then, given na yung E, which is 500 newton per coulomb, and then, the theta is 30 degrees. And then, remember, equation natin, that the differential um, electric flux is equal to E, the electric field, multiplied to the differential area and the cosine theta. So, multiply mo lang yung tatlo. 500 newton per coulomb multiplied to 3.14 meters square. Multiplied to 0 0.87. 0 0.87 is cosine 30. 0.866 kasi yun eh. So, round off natin, 0.87. Pag minultiply natin tatlo, we will have 1,365.9 newton meter square per coulomb. So, madali lang naman siya, di ba? Kapag ka, ang pinag-uusapan lang natin ay um, the differential electric flux. The, depende sa shape. Yun lang yung mag-cocus ng problema dyan. Ano pa yung shape na binigay sa atin? Mag-iiba iba kasing equation area niyan. And then, dun sa sulod natin video, ipapakita naman na kung ano ang relasyon ng equation natin ngayon for differential electric flux if we will enclose it in a Gaussian shape. So, dun natin madi-derive yung Gauss law. Now, let's take a look at a surface that is completely closed. How do we define flux? Here, we can put some normals, dA's, in different directions. By convention, the normal to the closed surface always points from the inside to the outside. Now, we can calculate the total flux going through this closed surface. The total flux is equal to the integral of d phi over the entire surface, which we write as the integral over the closed surface of E dot dA. The total flux can be positive, negative or equal to zero. If the same amount of flux is entering and leaving the surface, we have zero total flux. If more flux is leaving than entering the surface, then the total flux is positive. Opposite, if more flux is entering than leaving the surface, we have negative total flux. Let's take a look at another example and see how the electric flux is related to Gauss's law. We have a point charge plus Q in the center of a sphere with radius R. Now we will take a small segment, dA, which vector is perpendicular to the surface and is radially outward. 
the electric field generated by Q at this point is also radially outward. This means that dA and E anywhere on the surface of this sphere are parallel to each other and the angle between them theta is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. The differential of flux through the small surface area d phi is equal to E dA. The total flux phi is going to be the integral of d phi which is the integral over the closed surface E dA. The magnitude of the electric field everywhere is the same because the distance from the charge is the same at each point. So we can pull that out of the integral and we are left with E times A. The total area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared and the total flux through this closed surface is simply E times 4 pi r squared. From the previous videos we know that E is equal to K times Q divided by r squared which is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Here we can cancel out 4 pi r squared and we can notice that the total flux is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. The flux doesn't depend on the distance r, we would get the same result no matter the size of the closed surface around the point charge. What if we bring more charges inside the closed surface? The equation should also hold for any system of charges inside. This leads us to the Gauss's law which says that the electric flux going through a closed surface is the sum of all charges Q inside the closed surface divided by permittivity of free space epsilon naught. If the flux is zero that means there is no net charge inside the shape. There could be positive and negative charges inside the shape but the net is zero. No matter how weird the shape, Gauss's law always holds, as long as there is a perfect symmetry in the charge distribution inside the surface. So, in order to calculate the electric field, you need a symmetry. And there are... Okay, so, yun yung pinanggalingan ng equation natin na ito. Yung ating electric flux is equal to Q, yung ating charge over the epsilon nut. Now, sabi kanina, hindi naman maapektuhan kung marami kang charge or konti kang charge sa loob ng Gaussian uh, sphere natin or kahit anong shape na yon. Tapos nabanggit din kanina na kahit anong shape as long as may symmet symmetry, no symmetrical. Yun yung didiskis sa sunod na video eh. So yun lang po, if you, if you have uh, a charge inside uh, a symmetrical object, you could use this equation. Kapag hindi po, hindi po, hindi mag apply ito kasi... Kung papansin nyo kanina, meron time doon na pinull out yung integral sign. Kasi nga, equal yung ating charges around the sphere. So, yun lang po. Now, madali na naman siguro kumpitin yan. No? Given lang yung ano yan. Eh. Given yung charge divided by the epsilon not and then you will have the electric flux. So, I hope you learn about Coslo. To learn more about Coslo and electric potential, Watch my next video in, in general physics. Kalmala.